Hi, I'm Richard Davis, and welcome to Burnaby Connect Jr. First up, we hope to add a little sparkle to your day with Mountain Gems. Hi, hi, hi. Ever since I was very young, I've been fascinated with the, the natural world. And uh, looking down, of course, all you see is rocks, dirt and rocks. I can remember, you know, when I was very, very young, going into the, the woods near our place with a, my father's hammer and cold chisel and going to this big boulder and whacking it a few times and sure that it was going to split in half and all these gemstones would tumble out and, you know, I would be well, rich and famous and have lots of gemstones. I became an accountant and decided that there was better things in the world than counting things and writing things down on paper all the time and working with stones would have been the best job in the world. So I decided to go into this. Meeting the people, getting to know their different uh, fields of interest, whether it's gems, whether it's minerals, whether it's jewelry making. The jewelry making basically is part of the interest in gemstones. You, I started basically cutting rocks into polished gemstones and then after I did a couple hundred of them I said, oh well, you know, maybe I should actually do something with them. So I started doing a little bit of jewelry. I think my favorite is the quartz family. Its uh, simplest form basically is a single crystal which everybody loves. Iron will make that uh, quartz crystal purple, in other words amethyst. If you heat that particular one, whether in the ground naturally or in a kiln, you will turn it into a yellow form of quartz called citrine. That has extremely wide application, whether it's just as something to admire on your shelf or whether you can take that piece and carve it into something that will uh, be beautiful and you can set it into jewelry. The cryptocrystalline, of course, would be like a cabochon material or a carving. The macro crystal would either be carved or faceted. Uh, so, you know, you have clear quartz, citrine, amethyst, the green, uh, praseolite, uh, you have smoky quartz that can be faceted or carved. So it's a very wide variety of applications that you can uh, uh, put onto this material and produce fantastic things. Other stores I know have had much more problems. Very small places or restaurants and places like that are hurting a lot. So. We can thank our lucky stars that we, we have the customers that are supporting us. Let's get wild with Music Madhouse Records. I started listening to records when I was very young and always loved music. And I've experimented with other formats, CDs and digital. Vinyl is definitely the nicest, the warmest, the cleanest sound. This is my 14th year selling records and owning this little shop. And at my age, I didn't really want a 9 to 5, paycheck to paycheck kind of a job. I wanted to be flexible and to do something I really love. Oh, geez, that's a real tough one. They're all memorable. But I've had some prison members come in here and buy records. Uh, if you would have asked me about a year ago, I would have said Led Zeppelin. Everybody buys Led Zeppelin, but lately I think that's kind of shifted a little bit towards the metal, Jewish Priest, Iron Maiden, that kind of stuff. That's really hot right now. I really like all kinds of music, right from rock to jazz to blues to soul. Alice Cooper would be my number one. Mainly my hours are shortened because I'm not getting as many customers. I'm down to three days a week instead of six days a week. And I think the problem is uh, because of my really small, tight space, I can't have any more than uh, two customers at a time, right? 
the customers are getting younger and younger. When I first started doing this, it was mostly guys in their 40s kind of bringing back what they used to do. Now it's teenagers. They're buying 70s classic rock like uh, Queen, David Bowie, Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin. And I think because they've heard the digital sound and the, with the social media nowadays, you know, uh, friends talk to each other and they say, try vinyl. It's just a much nicer experience. Now on to another madhouse, the ski hill. So, Griffin, how has COVID affected the lines at Cypher? The lines at Cypher have, due to COVID, have become longer throughout the day. Um, once everyone gets off work and school, they seem to go up and the lines go from 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, during the day from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m., it's usually about five to 10 minutes. Um, so how has it like, changed your jobs? Because I know you do base operations and you're a coach. Yeah, so for my ski instructing job, uh, it's affected me a lot because I'm not allowed to bring any of the kids into the lodge to get lunch. So that means they have to bring their own lunch, they have to pack a bag, and we have to ski with a bag throughout the entire day. Um, during lunch, we have to sit outside, even if it's raining, and uh, socially distance, maintain six feet. Uh, for my base ops job, it's become pretty hard because uh, we're only allowed to have two people at a table. We have to have our masks on 24-7. We have to remind other people to put their masks on and keep them on. And if there's any disputes, we have to break them up, which isn't COVID safe. Mm. Oh, thanks for meeting me, Dad. Down here at Burnaby North, half fight means something a bit different than it does up on the ski hill. Next up, an update on Burnaby North construction. How is the current construction of the new Burnaby North Secondary School going? It's going well. As you can see out my window, there, there are a lot of guys out on site. They're, they're on time. Fingers crossed we'll be ready to open in September of 2022. Do you think the effects of the new school will be greater than the perks in terms of technology and new school equipment? Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be pretty spectacular. Uh, obviously, anything that's modern and, and flexible and collaborative is going to be better than the very antiquated school that we're in. Uh, I think some of the things are things we, we won't even necessarily realize until we're there. Just the opportunity for students and staff to come, come together in collaborative ways. Obviously, the, the, you mentioned the technology end of things, so it's going to be um, sort of the, the high-tech high in the province when it opens up. So it'll be sort of the most tech, technologically advanced building in the province when we start. And so it's going to enhance learning opportunities for everybody in the building. Do you think that the new school will offer new courses or classes, for example, maybe some new language courses? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, that's what we're hoping. So one of the biggest shifts for us with the new building is that it's not organized departmentally. So in our school, you sort of have the English department and the science department and the social department. And so we want to maintain the strengths of those departments. What do you think will happen to the previous buildings, the north and the south? Because we already know that um, the south will be um, torn down, yeah. but we don't exactly know what's going to happen to the north. So what is going to happen to the north building? Yeah, that's a great question. So once we move into the new one, both the north and the south buildings will be demolished. The south building will become a landscape park area. So, so there will be a nice community use facility and, and sort of a beautiful grass area leading up to the new building. The north building will be demolished and will be replaced by a field that will compensate for the loss of fields down here. So you and I are sitting just on the edge of the second field that will be up here on the north side of campus right next to our existing one. Uh, Principal Ronsley, thank you very much. I've been Richard Davis from Burnaby Connect. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Bye.